Hello, this is Katherine Dubberly, the answer lady. Some people have said that they would like to see multicolor tuck stitch in more detail than the first video. So here goes. You will need to watch the first video to understand this one because some things are explained in it that I didn't repeat here. However, this one is in real time with me talking you through the exact process stitch by stitch. So I hope it helps you. Here goes. Now we finish the two rows of white that were taking place at the end of the last video. And it's time to change colors. On each needle that was tucking, the two rows of white are represented by loops that I didn't knit off and one loop from the row before, pale green in this case. That's the case on every one of the needles that was tucking. On this row, we will knit all of those off. We buried the yarn tail between the two layers of fabric by putting it between the two rows of needles. And we start a new row Do the as same with usual. this yarn tail. Wrap across. As always with your wrap, you want to mind the tension. Keep it as even as possible, of course, and just tight enough to stay on the needles. On the right hand end, I always knit off one of my needles first before wrapping back. For me, this helps to stay neat and keep that edge as tight and smooth as the other edge. And here we are back. I knit the end needle again to anchor the yarn so I can let go with it with my hands. Now here is what's important to know about tuck stitch. See these three loops below the new wrap? All of them knit off at the same time. And this needle we be will begin tucking. It's two over from the needle that tucked last time. So we won't knit it off. But the ones next to it, we knit off as ordinary stockinette. Now there should be three stitches in a row that knit normal stockinette. There's the third. This one's going to tuck, so we won't knit it. Knit these off. All three loops that it's holding. This needle will begin tucking. So we'll knit off the next three. That one didn't quite go. There we are. Three loops on this one all get knitted off. There's the third stitch. This one will tuck. One, two, three. This one will tuck. One, two, Three. There's a fourth needle down here, but you never tuck an end needle. We're going to do the same thing on the back. Opposing needles tuck, so that will be this one. The two left stitches knit off normally, as well as the three after the needle that will begin tucking. That one will tuck. One two, three. You'll notice that I periodically pull the work down. It's because with all of these loops knitting off, some of them tend to flop up and get in the way. I don't want them to flop up so much that they root themselves back on a needle, causing problems down the line. Let's see, one, two, this one should knit. This one should tuck and it's opposing one that's tucking on the other board. That's correct. One, two, three, and the fourth one being the end needle knits off. Okay, we have made our first row with the green and it's time to do the second. Normal stock and it wrap. around the end, and 
for the end stitch. Wrap back. Knit the end stitch so I can let go. This row is very easy because you already have some stitches tucking to tell you for certain which needles not to knit. Where there are three loops stacked up, we're not going to knit off. So just knit the others in normal stockinette. This is what I meant in the last video. We don't have any stacks of loops that get knitted this row. So although it's knitted exactly like the previous row in most ways, we don't have a collection of loops that must be knitted off all at once. I think it's time to pull down. I'm knitting with cotton yarn and as you know that's a little bit trickier than some yarns to work with because it has no resilience. And the solution is getting just the right tension. And for me, pulling the work down frequently also helps. Time to do the other side. Tug down. Now you can see that we have three loops building up on some of the needles, which is just where we started. So we're about to finish the second row of the acid green, and it's time to switch to something else. Therefore, as soon as I'm sure that all my stitches are correct, see a problem do you? I'll break my yarn, lay the tail between the board so it gets knitted in, and let's change back to yellow. Now we're exactly where we started a few minutes ago when I added the green yarn. Hang the loop, Lay the tail between the boards. Stock and knit wrap. I'm going to anchor my right hand stitch as I always do. Up and over. Wrap back. for the left end stitch. Now at this point, these three loops would need to be knitted off, as do these three, these three, these three, and these three. Same on the other board. We will begin tucking on this needle, this needle, this needle, this needle, and this one. This is what makes the design. There go the loops. Tuck on this one. Three stitches all at once. Tuck on this one. One. Two. Now I want to remind you that this is only one of many tuck patterns. The tucking is only determining that we hold stitches, but it doesn't tell us by definition which stitches. I could be working with every other needle rather than every fourth or every fifth needle. 
I could change the colors and the rows at different intervals and doing so would result in different patterns as you have seen on the dishcloth pattern. And although there are four, I believe, designs included in that pattern, don't be thinking that there are only four designs possible. The number of tuck patterns is probably nearly infinity, more than we ever need to use anyway. Sometimes it gets impractical. There's only a certain number of loops that you would want a needle to hold before it knits off. They would start to be unwieldy. And the characteristic of holding loops is to create a characteristic bumpiness in the fabric. There is a point at which this ceases to be a good thing and becomes a problem. I did something wrong. I see what it is. This stitch should start tucking. So I'm going to put the stitch I knitted back on. This one I should have knitted off. Okay, all better, but let's count and be sure. Tucking, one, two, three, knitting, tucking, one, two, three, tucking, one, two, three, four, that one's tucking, one, two, three, fourth one tucking. We're good. Now it's simply time to continue wrapping. The second row of this color will be exactly like the first row, except that we won't have a pile of three loops to knit off. And when we're done with this row, we'll go back to what we were doing with the green. For this tuck design, I'm just alternating which stitches are held. And now I'm sure that it's becoming clear to you. It's easy to lose track, but it's also not difficult to do once you catch on to the rhythm of the whole matter. And you can always count stitches and see where you're going. There you go. There's our white row. There's our green row. And because we held these stitches, these are the ones that tucked while well, these stitches knitted. So the fabric got longer in between and didn't get longer here. It couldn't because we didn't knit the stitch off. And that's what makes the interesting designs. I hope this helps you understand tuck perfectly. Happy knitting. And bye now.